Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and in today's video, I'm very excited to have my bespoke measurements taken by Francis Wapplinger, a part of a new generation of bespoke artisans here in America. Of course, he's a bespoke shoemaker. Uh, Francis, hey, thank you so much for coming into the office. It's exciting to have you. And as far as the bespoke shoe making process is concerned, this is probably one of my favorite parts. It's that genesis, you know, where you take the measurements uh, and that really kicks off the entire cascade of events uh, that ends up with producing a beautiful bespoke shoe. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the first step and uh, we can get started. Well, great, well, let's get started. So uh, what's first? All right, if you can uh, take a seat. Okay. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, Get my pad out here. You can just lift your feet up and get comfortable there so you can sit and stand. If you go ahead and stand up, please. All right. So what I'm gonna do, trace your feet, the outline, and then we're gonna take some measurements. So this kind of goes back to, I mean, this process is hands-on as you can see. So kind of goes with the whole tradition, whereas now I know there's some digital uh, computerized ways to do measurements, but I prefer this. All right, so if you can keep your heel down and just lift your toes up a little bit more, perfect. So going up the foot, I like to make room and kind of do four measurements that are kind of getting the circumference uh, of your forefoot here and into the arch. And then also with doing it by hand as well, um, I just think it goes kind of in the spirit with, you know, a handcrafted uh, shoe. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's sculpture, right? So. Exactly. You have to interpret the measurements. That's what makes a great fitting last, right? Exactly. You're interpreting the measurements and also, you know, what the client wants in the shoe and in the fit. And some things, you know, you kind of approach this as an art form, like you mentioned. This isn't science here. So we need to be accurate, but there is room, as I think you put it quite well, for a uh, Interpretation. Now, do you have any issues with your ankle bone there? No. Nope. Does that seem to be? I mean, the. It's um, pretty flat, nothing too crazy there. You know, the instep is the one thing that'll really get me. Okay. And any other issues? Not really. Okay. I mean, feet look pretty normal here, so. What are you marking? What's the. So this here, it's gonna be the measurement up and around kind of the, from the heel to the top of your foot. So I like to just get that. For me, it's not as important of a measurement, but just provides a little bit more information for me to work with. So moving on to the next foot here. And as you said, this is kind of the first step in the bespoke process. So when I'm working, you know, I'm always referencing these measurements when I'm creating the last. But at the same time, um, I see it as kind of a guide. For me, it's not the end all be all. I really just want to get that fitting shoe on your feet. Yeah, and then from there, you're making adjustments based off of the actual exactly. fitting shoe itself. Exactly. And I still will reference the measurements, but uh, for me, it's really the beginning of the process. Now, if you can just lift your toes up, keep your heel down, please. And again, you're doing this for both feet because you, will you start with one foot first and then duplicate the last and make the adjustments to accommodate the second? Or how do you approach that? I'm kind of comparing the feet. Usually there's not a huge difference. Mm -hmm. 
Whereas if one foot was a huge difference, then the shoes, you know, they might not look the same. So it's kind of creating shoes that are actually different measurements, mm -hmm. but when in appearance, you can't really tell. And usually people's feet aren't, you know, no one's, most people's feet, they're not identical, but the measurements are usually quite similar. All right, you can lift your toes up. A little more. Okay. And which diagonals are you going on? Like, I mean, you're going from joint to joint, or is it just kind of stepping up the foot? Yeah, so the first diagonal, I'm really looking at the ball of the foot and kind of going out to where your little toe is. Okay. But in regard to my process and how I learned, I really want to get four measurements going across the top. Okay. So depending on the length of your foot, I'm kind of eyeballing where I'm placing these. And the top measurement should kind of end right around here, or the top of your foot, right before it kind of goes up into your ankle. And as I said, I mean, um, I do appreciate the different series that you do because every maker has a certain method and system that they're familiar with and that works for them. You know, you've been to a number of makers and I'm sure each one has a slightly different way of doing measurements. And I think it's good for people to understand that. And then when I'm pulling the tape here, I mean, you can kind of feel it on your foot, but I'm pulling it taut, but not super tight. And in a way, it's kind of like a puzzle, whereas I'm taking all the information, I'm putting it together in the last, and it's also, you're telling me, you know, what last shape you want. So it's kind of putting all the pieces together. What's that right there? That's just seeing how high your ankle bone is. Okay. I like to take that measurement, but with you, since you don't have problems, mm -hmm. you know, um, your ankle bone doesn't stick out super far. It's not something I really need to focus on. Whereas someone like myself, my ankle bone, it's really bony. It sticks out. If the top line is hitting that, yeah. then it can cause a problem. Really? Yeah. Now, if you can just go ahead, try keeping your feet in the same place. Just sit down. I'm just going to do the same thing, but with you sitting. Okay. And here you're really looking for the differential in terms of the weighted versus exactly. the unweighted exactly. distribution. And I would assume with someone like yourself with your build, it's probably going to be very similar, but uh, it's just good to have those measurements. Now I'll start with this foot here. Can you just lift your toes up, please? All right. Yeah, because some feet can accommodate more squeeze, squeezing if you can, if it's a fleshy foot. Exactly. Whereas, you know, something that is perhaps a little bit leaner, you know, too much pressure in an area can really cause significant pain. Exactly. And then it also depends to, you know, your preference. So, you know, after this, we can always talk about kind of how you like your shoes to fit. Do you like your shoes kind of vacuum packed onto your feet? Do you like a little more room or something in between? And part of it too is the kind of expectation and what the client's used to. Mm -hmm. And what I found with a lot of uh, American clients, as opposed to kind of what I was seeing in uh, Italy, is a lot of Americans just wear their shoes way too loose. And they're not used to a shoe that even is a little snug. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of something that was a big difference uh, coming back here. That I am kind of navigating as a maker and uh, yeah. talking with my clients. Do you have the conversation with the clients about proper you know, proper socks, because some Americans, I mean, again, because they're so used to shoes not fitting air on the side of a slightly plusher sock to kind of help buffer any yes. discomfort. Whereas with a bespoke pair of shoe, you really want as thin of a sock as possible because that's what allows you to really experience the full magic of a shoe that actually fits. Exactly. Um, 
you know, whenever I do a fitting, I bring a pair of dress socks. Some people, they'll come in their trainers, they'll have their, you know, workout socks on, or they won't even think about, oh, I'm going to be wearing a different sock with these shoes. So some people, like yourself, they're quite aware of that. Other people, you know, ask them, you know, what kind of sock are you planning to wear with this? Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of preface it like, will you be wearing a dress sock? Yeah, but yeah. you know, here we're talking about millimeters of difference mm -hmm. and, you know, a cotton sports sock versus a proper finely knit dress sock like these sovereign grade ones we carry, you know, that could be two or three millimeters. Easily, easily. Yeah, a gigantic Ooh. difference. Yes, and it doesn't sound like much, but when you're wrapping your foot in uh, two millimeters of fabric, it really, I mean, it, it's a huge difference. Yeah. Slip your toes a little bit. Thanks. What is the hardest part of the last making? I think in general, um, that is definitely one of the more challenging parts is just creating a last and getting the fit right. That's one thing for me personally, probably one of the most challenging aspects and there's such an emphasis on the correct fit as well that you need to live up to uh, that expectation. So in general, there's not one part about the last making, but really, you know, getting that proper fit. Yeah. It's, for me at least, I think it's one of the more challenging aspects of bespoke shoe making. Yeah, because there's a lot of people that can make a beautiful bespoke shoe, mm -hmm. um, but the fit at the end of the day is I feel like what creates a really long-term kind of successful relationship, right, is that longevity. Definitely. And as you said in the beginning, it's, it's not a science. I'm not putting these numbers into a computer. You know, I'm using... You're not 3D measure. printing a last? I'm not 3D printing a last. You know, I am interpreting these. Mm -hmm. And part of that is, you know, going off kind of how you like your shoes to fit as well. Yeah. Great. Is this it? So this is the first step. Next okay. thing, I will have you uh, just stand on a pedograph. Okay. It gives me a little bit more information right. so I can see where your feet actually make contact uh, mm -hmm. with the ground. Okay. So uh, measurements are complete, but uh, you know, do you have any problems with fit in the past? Anything I should know about? Yeah, I mean, I think the only thing that ever really bothers me is just the uh, high instep right here. Mm -hmm. Right here at the, the top. You know, at the end of the day especially, I mean, that can get pretty uncomfortable. Yeah, I think that's something we can definitely accommodate. Obviously, with the facing of the shoe being right here, you know, it is one of those points in the shoe that can be a stress point. Mm -hmm. um, and it feels like, and from what you said, is your feet are similar to mine, kind of slender, bony feet. Um, but I think that's something, you know, we can definitely figure out. Yeah, okay. And then how much, just out of curiosity, I mean, do you see your client's feet kind of evolve? I mean... You know, is it something where if you're having a bespoke pair of shoes made and they fit tight, it's kind of like, you know, foot binding where, you know, your feet don't move much because you have a shoe that is actually kind of supporting it? Uh, or is that just an inevitability, kind of like with your chest expanding as you age? So I think it depends on the person. I mean, just like with the measurements, our measurements are different and people's feet change over time. But every individual, you know, has a kind of different situation. If someone was to gain a lot of weight, um, if there's a woman and she becomes pregnant, that can change your foot size drastically. Yeah. Um, if someone develops health issues. Mm -hmm. But th the foot changing, that would really happen, you know, over a 10, 20, even 30 year period. Yeah. You know, so if you ordered shoes once a year, let's say, and they fit, everything feels good, I wouldn't be concerned. I wouldn't need to do another fitting, you know, retake the measurements. Yeah. But if I didn't see you for 10 years, then I'd want to do retake the measurements, do another fitting, and kind of start the whole process again yeah. from the beginning. Yeah, okay. So the pedograph, it's a, some people call this a Harris mat, but it just takes an ink impression of your feet. So if you just give me a minute, I'm gonna put some fresh ink on here and uh, get it ready. And this is something I kind of picked up once I got back stateside and talking to people and just kind of doing a little research, looking around. So this is something I just added to the measurement repertoire here that I thought just gives me a little little more information. Yeah. And what is this, I mean, where does this factor in the most? In the last or in the, because the bottom of the last is what effectively contours the insole. Is that mm -hmm. kind of... Weird? Exactly. So I'm kind of looking at both these measurements and kind of taking information 
you know, and making sure, you know, like where your heel hits, where the ball of the foot is. So when I take the tracing, I'm really only seeing the outside here. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing where it comes in here. Yeah. And that's kind of where your foot is really making contact with the insole of the shoe. Yeah, and that's another difference of a really, of a bespoke pair of shoe is that the insole is molded yeah. to the bottom of the last that is carved out and shaped based off of the measurements. Exactly. Whereas with the ready to wear shoe, you just have a flat insole. It's very flat. And that's another reason with the bespoke shoe is when you carve kind of that insole in there, you know, when you get into the waist construction, yeah, it's, it's arch too carved to get a machine in there. Yeah. So it really, that is one place too yeah. where you can have a huge difference. And you just feel kind of the insole nicely kind of oh, yeah. touching your foot. Cupping the foot and supporting right there. Exactly. Okay. Now if you want to go ahead and stand on this, first stand here, then here, and just stand normal. Okay. Your normal weight distribution. Yeah. And just stand there. So we're going to get a nice ink impression under here. So hopefully we get a good impression, but if not, we'll just put some more ink on. Do this again. Just make sure we get back here where that heel is. All right, you can step off. Let's see how it turned out. There we go. Look at the reveal. There we go. So, so that's enough info for me. Yeah. It's a little missing here, but... Not yeah. a big problem. So what are you seeing here? So talk a little bit about this. I mean, I see how the grid, you know, the more weight changes mm -hmm. the pattern. Yeah, so there's more weight here. This looks pretty normal. It's a little bit of more weight on the big toe. But one thing I really like to look at this is where the arch is. You know, because when I'm measuring here, you're already coming up the side of the last yeah. in here. But I can see here where the arch comes in there. So that shows me you do have a nice arch. We can put a lot of, you know, build kind of the insole right up in there. Okay. Whereas if you're, you know, if we were getting some of the check marks in here, I might actually have to flatten the arch. Okay. Um, and it depends on the person. Some people where their arches kind of come down, you know, so they say, I want a lot of arch support. Mm -hmm. Like I want my arch to kind of be pushed up. Yeah. And other people, they don't like that and it's uncomfortable. So you actually have to lower the arch of the last a little bit yeah. to accommodate that. But with you, well, it's relatively normal. Yeah. So when I have the last sitting here, I see the side of the last, but then I can kind of look under it and just see kind of actually where your foot is making contact there mm -hmm. and then build that arch up. Yeah. And so this really affects kind of the waist that you can make. I mean, this you could probably do something quite narrow, mm -hmm. right? But someone that, you know, maybe has an arch that collapses a little bit more, you're going to need more of a square waist. That's correct. Yeah. What about like, you know, toes like there's a little bit of pressure there is that something that you'd carve out on the insole no i wouldn't really make any adjustments for that toe mm -hmm. but it might be something i would keep in mind you know when you do the fitting shoe yeah and just making sure that area is comfortable and i do kind of like what you had mentioned earlier where it's really about interpreting these measurements and kind of what i'm seeing here and i think that is a probably the most accurate way to put it and it's almost like a puzzle i'm taking this information carving out the last, coming back to the fitting shoe, seeing if all the pieces fit. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe there's a few adjustments we need to do. And that really is kind of a big essence of uh, the bespoke process. Yeah. Is having, you know, clear communication and a relationship with the client. Yeah. And the goal at the end of the day is making a beautiful pair of well-fitting shoes, not a pair of shoes that, you know, perfectly contours the shape of your foot. Exactly. Because that would be a foot-shaped pair of shoes. Okay. All right. So we're going to do the same thing here. Just trace the outline. And also some things, you know, come up regarding the fit in the fitting and not here. And it just depends, too, on uh, the person's feet, their kind of expectations. 
And also too, I've had some people where they picked a stiffer leather and the, the fit is really nice, but they just think, oh man, like this leather, it's you know, like a box calf. Mm -hmm. It's not the softest, most supple leather, it's classic, but they realize, you know what? The fit's good, but I just need a softer leather because my foot is a little extra sensitive in this area. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing too with the fitting shoe that can kind of change maybe what the final shoe will look like. You're all set here. Let's make sure it came out okay. There we go. Yep. So anything different between the two that again sticks out? Let's see here. I mean, you can see here, there's a difference of the weight distribution a little bit. Mm -hmm. Relatively similar. Great, so you take these measurements back to the workshop in New York and Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and then, you know, how soon after the measurements do you normally start on building the last, and how long does that process take? So, after I receive the measurements, it's usually about four months till I'll take a look at these and kind of start working with them. And then the whole process for the first pair of bespoke shoes is six to eight months. Yeah, and that includes that first four. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. And how long, I mean, how long would you say that you actually spend carving the last? Oh, that can be usually a day or so. Um, so that part... For both? It's not, yeah, for both. It's not incredibly time, time consuming, but it's something where, you know, if I feel like the measurements are kind of giving me a little trouble, I'm not quite getting the shape I want, I might work on it over a few day period. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe in the morning I'll be working on your last. And I'm like, you know what, I just, I'm going to take a little break, work on another pair. So I'm always doing, you know, multiple pairs at once. Yeah. I'm not just working on your pair. I'll have your pair going with another pair or two going yeah. at the same time. Yeah, it's not sequential. You've got a lot going on in parallel. Yes. Yeah. Well, great. Well, that's exciting. Thank you so much. Thank Francis, you. And, uh, it's been a pleasure. Appreciate you coming. You know, anyone that is uh, interested in getting in touch with Francis can find him on Instagram. Uh, and through his website. Uh, we've got the links uh, uh, to both of those in the description of this video. Uh, let us know what you thought. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Uh, let us know in the comments below. That, of course, helps us uh, know what type of content to continue to film and what you enjoy watching. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Thanks for watching.